Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my weekly fly tying video for uh, June 18th, actually it's June 17th, 2020. And this one's getting out a little bit late because I just ran out of time. Uh, what I'm doing here is actually a kind of a, a follow-up video on a video I did before um, of a... a did a uh, mare's uh, mini leech or micro leech, I can't remember what that's called. But then I kind of played off of it and came up with a new pattern and said in the video uh, that I was going to be playing with it some more and probably going to make it jig style. And that's what I've got here. I'm calling this a baby sculpin, and uh, you know, there's my finger. And so it's it's quite a small fly. I mean, this is this is a size 10, 2x long hook, and so it's as big as a you know a size 12 woolly bugger or something like that. And so this is you know that that inch inch and a half long uh, bait fish that it's not really going to eat out of aggression. It's going to eat it just like you would eat a stonefly nymph or something like that, you know, more as food. And really, one to two inches uh, for most trout is actually what they're eating. You know, if, if you get a hit on a great big streamer, unless you're fishing the White River or something, that's mostly an aggression strike. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, uh, very simple pattern, jig style, so you can you can euro nymph with it. And in fact, I will probably mostly fish this under an indicator uh, on on float trips. And that's that's kind of why I came up with this because these dead drifted sculpins, you know, usually I use a woolly bugger or some kind of a sculpin pattern um, up to a size four. But uh, I think this one is going to produce more fish, if not necessarily bigger fish. But a uh, fairly interesting way of tying it too. As you can see, it's got rubber legs there in the middle, and uh, and that flash on the body um, is actually tied to the hook shank in a fairly interesting way to create the body. You know, it's not wrapped or anything. But anyway, I'll shut up and get tying here. All right. So my hook here is an Orvis um, 2BCJ size 10, which is a 2x long barbed uh, nymph hook or barbed jig nymph hook. It's one of the very few barbed. Uh, nymph hooks you'll find for jigs, and it's a 2x long shank, which makes it much better for for stonefly nymphs and for um, for streamers. Now I have mashed that barb because this is going to be tied jig style, and I don't want uh, I'm going to use a, a pine squirrel strip for the uh, wing on this, and of course getting that onto the hook with a barbed hook wouldn't work very well. But the first thing I'm going to do here is wrap my thread back to the bend, and uh, my thread on this fly is actually monofill uh, for the first thread. I use two threads on this, and you'll see why I have to use a monofilament thread for this. Um, but I don't use it for the whole fly because monofilament thread is kind of a pain, pain to work with. It's slippery, it, it's fairly weak, etc. But the very first thing I'm going to do here is I came back to the bend of the hook, and I'm just going to dub on some olive Aussie possum. And really, all this is going to do, the whole purpose for this is just to keep the pine squirrel strip from sliding up the body. And so, um, you know, you could use red, you could use some more flash like I'm going to use for the body here. You can kind of use whatever you want. Um, and then I'm going to return my thread about three quarters of the way up there. Now the legs on this fly, which I tie in before the body, um, not really intended to be legs. They're intended to be pectoral fins. Because if you actually look at a sculpin, they've got kind of four strike triggers. One is sort of a d dull golden cream, maybe a tinge of olive belly. Uh, one is a prominent dorsal fin in you know whatever color, olive or tan. Uh, one is prominent pectoral fins, and then one is a big head. And so here's that, you know, my, my flash, which I'm going to tie in for the belly here in a second, is matches the belly, and then these are intended to give that wide forward profile of the pectoral fins. So what I'm going to do here is just tie these in with X wraps. Um, and the worst thing you could do here is tie these in too far forward, um, because I do not want these to lay back. You know, I'm not tying these in to be... Uh, like a lateral line or anything like that. I want them perpendicular to the hook shank. And so um, that's actually why I'm tying these in before anything else. You know, normally you would tie the body on the sculpin first, uh, or the belly in this case, but I'm actually doing it with the, uh, I'm doing the legs first just to make sure I'm not too far forward. Okay, I've got those in and uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of head cement to keep that in place. Now I could use, uh, these are, the legs I tied in there are uh, Montana Fly Company uh, Barred Sexy Floss in uh, in Amber. And it's, you can see it's kind of more of a brownish tan almost. It's, it's a little bit of gold color to it, but it's a good basic sculpin color. Um, and then now what I'm going to do is tie in my belly on this fly. 
And what I'm using for this, what I used on the original pattern, which was actually on a scud hook, was just a little crystal flash, and I wasn't really too happy with that. But I've got some, I believe this is either ice wing fiber or ripple ice fiber, but it's just, you know, long, a long fiber, uh, flash fiber. Here's the package, and I got this as part of a sample pack from Hairline because I'm on, I'm on Hairline uh, Tire, and I have a pro account with them, and so they send me samples of new products. But this is kind of a pearlescent gold color, and that's probably what I would use whatever color of, of the fly I was tying here. But I'm just going to come in, and since I've got a pretty good bunch of that right there, I'm not going to really worry about... Uh, um, doubling that back on itself. Normally I would I would take a flash like this and double it back on itself. What I am going to do though, because I'm not doubling it back on itself, is just trimming that. I wet that down and I'm just going to tie that in first thing right ahead of those legs and then just go over the top of the legs and then bind that down the hook shank. And I'm not worried at all about you know segmenting that properly or anything like that. I'm just wrapping it down the hook. And you can see there that clear uh, monofilament thread and, and you can get the monofilament thread in kind of a smoke color too. Uh, I'm definitely using the clear on this. But you can see that it doesn't exactly disappear but it's also not very prominent. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not really worried about any kind of uh, segmentation or anything there. I just was binding it down the hook shank to keep it sort of out of the way. And then I'm going to come in here and then just kind of with my scissors at an angle just kind of saw through that material to get it to the length I want which is going to be a little bit shorter than I tie in the wing. Okay, and then I'm done with my um, monofilament thread here, and so I'm just going to throw a quick whip finish. And you can see that just broke when I was whip finishing it. Now, if I was actually tying off the fly to be done with it, I would have to glue that or something to keep that from unraveling. But since I'm coming in here with my second thread, I'm just wrapped right over those, those thread wraps that would have unraveled if I just left them there. I don't like that monofilament thread. I don't use it for much, and I'm really only using it here because... Uh, because I have to. Now I should have also mentioned I've got a black nickel uh, slotted tungsten bead on there and then I also have a few wraps of 015 lead free wire uh, this stuff and uh, shove that up there and, and you don't need to put that wire in it just keeps the bead locked in and, and you know having the bead in place not rotating is kind of nice when you've got a fiddly fly like this. Okay, and then my next material on this fly is going to be an olive pine squirrel strip. And, of course, any kind of a sculpting color would be fine. And uh, I'm going to measure that against the hook shank here. And I, I usually don't actually cut my zonker style strips uh, to length, you know, before I tie the fly. I usually, because, you know, there's less, less waste than the way I'm doing it here. So I'm just going to put that onto the hook there, slide it up. And you can see that, that bump I uh, put in there. Um is going to catch that and keep it from sliding up the body because that, that, you know, tying a really sparse body like this, if I didn't have that bump there, that would just slide right up the body. Anyhow, I'm going to come in here now and just get that up towards the head and uh, as long as you can tie it off, don't worry about getting it, you know, too far forward or something like that because a little bit of extra fur right up at the front um, doesn't hurt anything on this fly because that, that gives it a, that kind of front heavy profile that are that's pretty common on a sculpin. Just get that in there. And what I like to do is just get a couple wraps in and then trim that strip and then I'll come back in and get a bunch more over the top of it. I find that's the best way to uh, avoid ex excess bulk at the front of that fly. Okay, and then next thing I'm going to do is create actually one other step here. Um, and this is something I'm still still fiddling with this fly, but I've got some more of that Australian possum here And you could use whatever kind of dubbing you like, but I'm gonna get that And I'm actually just gonna tie it in there as a clump style here uh, Just on the on the bottom of the hook And then on the top of the hook Need a little bit more and this is kind of the same, if you're tying a muddler, for example, you know, you tie in the first clump of deer hair as a collar. That's sort of what I'm doing here, and I didn't actually do this on the sample fly. And so I'm just kind of going to see how this looks, having a little bit but little bit more bulk there up the front of the fly. And also a little bit more movement. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now the next step, I'm going to throw a dubbing loop here. And you can see why I said on those those legs, if you tied them in too far back, um, 
you see how even the way I tied them in there, they're being pressed back a little bit by the dubbing. Imagine they were further forward than they are. Uh, they'd be they'd be essentially parallel to the hook shank, and that's definitely not what I want. I want those. That's why I also tied them so long. Do they want those prominent? Okay. So the next step here, I'll drop my dubbing, my bobbin cradle, hang my thread from it, and then I've got a dubbing twister here. Your dubbing twister of choice is fine, or just use your hands. But I've got a dubbing loop there. I'm going to put the twister in it. And then get some more of that Aussie Possum. And, you know, I, I am using a natural dubbing here rather than something like uh, Bruiser Blend or, um, you know, something like Leech Yarn would actually be pretty good for this too. Uh, it's kind of up to you, however you want to create this, you know, however you like to create a dubbed head on a fly uh, is up to you. I just kind of go in with the natural theme here. This is besides the... Uh, you know, with the dubbing and the, the pine squirrels, it's got a lot of little bit of natural variation in it. A lot of little bit. Uh, it's been a while since I've had any coffee, you wouldn't believe it. So I'm just kind of inserting that dubbing um, horizontally across the thread so it, it poofs out when I, when I twist it. That's about right. So I'm going to grab that um, kind of at the end of the dubbing and then give my twister a twist. And then when I get a good twist in there, I let it go, and it'll all twist up like that. And then I'm just going to wrap kind of a fuzzy head right here on the fly. And this is one case in fly fishing. It's They're, they're pretty rare, but this is one case where kind of more is more. Uh, I want a big bulky head on that because it's going to compress some in the water. I'm going to brush it out. Some of it's going to disappear, etc. Yeah, this is looking good. The... Uh, that sample fly didn't come out quite as good as I wanted, um, but like I said, this, this is still kind of an experimental pattern for me. Um, I haven't fished it much. I fished the previous version last fall and caught some fish on it, but I knew I wanted to fish it jiggy, or tie it jiggy, because uh, you know the vast majority of the flies I'm fishing on a dead drift where I'm bumping bottom like this, I, I want them tied as jigs because you know, the Yellowstone's a rocky river. If I'm not on the bottom, I'm not getting to the fish, and you know I don't want to lose these things. But I'm going to give that a good brush, and then I'm actually going to trim a little bit of an angle here right on the bottom, just because I've got a little bit heavy on the bottom, and I want that that uh, gold to show a little bit. All right, and there you have it. That is a baby sculpin, and one more step here. I'm going to grab those legs and trim those just a little bit. And I always like to save this step for the end just to make sure I don't cut them too short in the first place and then they disappear into that uh, head. And if anything, I could have tied those just a hair further back to get them to be perfectly perpendicular to the shank, but uh, that's not too bad as is. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, I may see you next week. I am starting to get busier, so my videos may be a little bit more haphazard. Um, it would take a miracle for me to be as busy as in a normal year, but I am starting to book some trips. And so if you are looking to come fishing this year, particularly in July and the first half of August, I suggest giving me a call pretty soon because uh, I've got plenty of days, but they're, you know, it's I've got like two or three days a week here and then three the next week and one the next week, that sort of thing. And so it's not, I don't have big blocks open. Um, but anyway, as always, thanks for watching and uh, good luck with your fishing.